I would like you to imagine yourselves 5,000 years ago. You would probably not be sitting in a conference room. You might be in the forest, you might be in a cave, something like that, and you would hear that kind of sounds. But you might also hear that kind of sound. And that would be a sign of danger. You would probably, that would probably trigger a response, you would start running for your life, or you would start uh, bracing your, your weapons or whatever to re respond uh, to, the, to the threat, to the danger. Uh, nowadays, the sounds which indicate danger have changed. You have this. That's a gunshot. Or you might have that. That's a car alarm, that can also be the sound of a burglar alarm. And uh, both these sounds are uh, indication of security threats and security incidents. So what we do at uh, Audio Analytic uh, is a new type of software for the recognition of that type of sound, environmental sounds. Uh, and at the moment, our software is installed in millions of cameras around the world uh, to help uh, reducing response times. For example, uh, when you have uh, one of the cameras detecting a gunshot, you can have the police coming faster to the place. Uh, or uh, if you have noises of aggression, same thing. Uh, so, yeah, that's how our software basically helps uh, to, to have a safer, safer society. That's an application in uh, security, the security space. But as a, as a sound technologist, I have to ask myself every day uh, the question, how do we come up with new applications for sound recognition? What, can we, what useful things can we do uh, by, uh, this, I mean, out of this principle of automatically recognizing sounds from the environment? And uh, for any innovative process, you use a little bit of the right part of the brain, the creative part. So that's the question, how do we create uh, new applications? But you also use a bit of the analytic part of the brain uh, to uh, ask the question, what is our relationship with the sounds around us? If we understand the relationship, our relationship with the sounds, with the environmental sounds, uh, maybe we can come up with new useful applications which go beyond the security space. So if we start exploring our relationship with the various sounds around us, one sound which is very, very important is the sound of speech. Uh, speech, to a large extent, uh, participates in defining us as human. Um, it's a very important sound for us. It has been studied uh, in humanities. You have lots of studies about linguistics, speech production, and so on. It has been also, uh, it has received a lot of interest in technology. Uh, the image here is one of the very first uh, speech synthesizers of, of all times. Uh, that's the machine from von Kempelen. Von Kempelen was a scientist in, uh, uh, in the 18th century, and he was trying to reproduce speech production with the technology of the time, which was pieces of wood and that funny air blowing uh, system. Uh, so, since as far as the 18th century, we've been intrigued by uh, the sound of speech and we've tried to reproduce it, recognize it, and so on. Sci-fi is full of people talking to robots, talking to computers. You have your uh, robots in Star Wars who, who are speaking to you. You have your HAL 9000 in 2001 Space Odyssey, and so on. Um, Technology-wise, nowadays, pretty much everyone in their mobile phone has some kind of a speech recognizer and speech synthesis as well. So that technology, uh, nowadays, I mean, uh, doing, building technology around the sound of speech uh, is very successful and has been booming uh, in the recent years. Now, another sound which is very important to us is the sound of music. Uh, again, in the humanities, there is lots of studies about music. Uh, in art, obviously, music is art. There is lots of developments, new uh, types of creation, of musical creation. Um, and so on. And we also acknowledge that uh, music has some kind of communicative value to us. It's some kind of nonverbal language. It can influence our emotions. Um, it can convey all sorts of things. So it, there is lots of uh, communicative intent in the, in the music. But what about the other sounds? There is a whole lot of other sounds coming from all over us, all sorts of physical processes producing sounds. Um, ourselves, we produce sometimes sounds which are not verbal. Um, so, what can we do with this? So, one way to, to find uh, answers to that, you know, when you study a new phenomenon, for example, when you start zoology, you start enumerating the animals, or oh, this one has four legs, this one has two legs, and so on. Why don't we do, for example, the same thing with sounds? Um, so, I've looked for examples of people trying to classify sounds in various, uh, various ways. 
And I found um, a TED talk, a very interesting TED talk from uh, Bernie Krause. And Bernie Krause was classifying sounds in terms of where they come from. He was uh, defining three uh, types of sounds, the geophony, which are the sounds produced by the earth, weather sounds, uh, the sound of the sea, and so on. The biophony, which is uh, the group of sounds produced by the animal kingdom, various bird songs, and so on. Uh, and the anthropony, which are the sounds produced by human beings, so speech, but also uh, sounds produced by artifacts made by humans, cars and so on. So his classification was what is the origin of various sounds. Then we've seen a talk by, by Julian Treasure, and uh, Julian Treasure is approaching our relationships to sound from the angle of how they impact our health. Uh, sounds can make or break your concentration, can make or break your mood, um, and so on. So both of these uh, are approaching sounds in ways which are uh, interesting, but not necessarily, uh, how to say, technologically practical. Um, I wouldn't know uh, what to do to uh, improve health, for example, at the moment, uh, uh, based on some sound analysis. So we had to, I had to come up with my own classification of sounds. So I defined three types of environmental sounds, uh, and I will explain what, what they are. Uh, First class would be the uh, intentional communicative sounds. I will explain what they are. Uh, then the incidental cue sounds, and finally the ambient sounds. So if we start with the first class, intentional communicative sounds, what are they? If I play something like this, that's the car alarm from the beginning, and that's a car telling you I'm being stolen or there is a problem. And that sound has been designed by humans to, to sound like that and to convey, to communicate something, to communicate that sense of something bad is happening. That's not the TED sound logo, that's actually the, the so opening sound of uh, uh, operating system distribution. Uh, it's the Ubuntu Linux uh, sound. Uh, and so that sound is also designed to communicate something. It starts with those kind of ticking noises which are uh, built from uh, African percussions because the name of that uh, operating system is an African name. Uh, but it's also a ticking sound which suggests there is some kind of machinery going on. Uh, and then there is that kind of special sign in the end which suggests all the, the world of nice things that you can do with your computer. So again, the, that sound has some clear communication intent, more on sort of emotional and uh, imagination layer, but still it communicates something. <laughs> so that's the sound of a baby cry. That's a baby telling you, I'm in trouble, I need your help, and that will probably trigger a response from you. Uh, so again, that sound has, communicates something. And that's something I've heard after the other uh, talks. Uh, it's also some form of nonverbal communication, uh, the audience uh, signifying some enjoyment of uh, theater or cinema or TED talk or something. So the common point of all these sounds is they uh, intend to communicate something, uh, and they might have been crafted by humans, or they might, uh, the baby has evolved to produce that kind of sound. Now, the second class is the incidental cue sound. So if I play something like this one, that's the gunshot from the beginning, uh, it does uh, mean that something bad is happening. Someone is shooting a gun, possibly on someone else. Uh, but the gun itself hasn't been designed to uh, convey, to, 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 to create that kind of communication. It just triggers a reaction from us, but it was not designed to create that communication. That's the sound of glass break. Again, it just results from the natural process of breaking glass. Uh, but for example, for security application, that might be an indicator that someone is breaking into your property. Uh, so my, you might want to be alerted of that and you might want to, might want to be, do uh, something about it. That's the sound of road traffic. If you're walking in the city, you're hearing cars, you might want to look around you, uh, around yourself. Uh, so that's uh, something, again, which is triggering some kind of response, but the cars were not designed to sound like that. And actually, the new cars, uh, the electric ones, don't produce sound, and they're considered uh, more dangerous for pedestrians because pedestrians cannot hear them coming. Uh, but originally, the cars were not actually designed to sound like, like, like that. So that's the sound of thunder. If you hear that, you might want to take your umbrella or take your coat. And that one, uh, I put it here because uh, most of the other sounds were coming from human artifacts, the car, the glass, the gun, and so on. Uh, but you can also have um, intentional, no, sorry, incidental cue sounds uh, coming from nature. What are the ambient sounds? Ambient sounds might be sounds like this one. 
as the sound of the forest. So it does impact your mood, it does impact your sense of peace or something, but it's neither intentional nor designed for that purpose. It's just is. It's just like that. Uh, and there are many sounds like these which don't necessarily trigger formatted response for us, um, but still they might impact our mood, our health, and so on. Those are the ambient sounds. Now, what do we do with these sounds? Uh, so sound recognition technology uh, plays with the notion, uh, notion of displacement at the moment. So displacement is a, is a notion coming from linguistics. It's the capacity of humans to talk about things which are not happening right here, right now. Uh, you can talk about things which are happening outside of this room, or you can talk about things from the past, and that's something which is very typical of humans as well. Uh, you, uh, animal uh, communication doesn't have the displacement. That's something typically human. How does that apply to technology? Well, for example, one of the most um, successful applications for sound recognition uh, at the moment is uh, remote alerting. So I can be here in this room, and then there can be something happening in my home, and with that technology, uh, I can actually <laughs> listen <laughs> to what's happening uh, in my home. Um, and in a way, uh, there is also a tiny bit of intelligence in this kind of applications insofar as it uh, also displaces our attention. We can, uh, our attention can be attracted about things which are not happening right here, right now. Uh, so, for example, in case of a break-in into my home, I can have the, the, the software sending an alerting message on my mobile phone. Um, regarding the uh, uh, location in time, uh, another application is the audio indexing. So that's the possibility to find sounds in large amounts of audio data. Uh, so nowadays, for example, the uh, TV uh, channels or radio uh, broadcast companies have massive archives of their programs, uh, and they have sometimes a problem uh, of indexing what was uh, in, the, in the archive. They can tag to an extent, but for example, if they want to find, I don't know, say a horse in, a, in, a, in one of their programs, if that was not tagged, how do you um, find that? So we could imagine, for example, having a horse sound detection uh, running through all the archives and then finding every place where there was sound of a horse, for example. So that would be the application of audio indexing. There is a new type of devices which is coming up as well. It's called the live logging cameras. And live logging cameras are wearable devices that you, that you wear on yourself, and they are recording uh, your environment 24-7, continuously, uh, in both videos, and some of them also record the sounds. And the idea is to uh, implement the notion of extended memory. Uh, so having a memory which is much more precise than our own memory. But the problem this poses is uh, once you have those massive amounts of recordings, how do you find uh, moments from the past which are corresponding to something, happiness, for example. So if you want to find happiness, maybe you want to find laughter in your soundtrack, um, and so on and so forth. So that would be the application of audio indexing. So today we have those two applications which are the most successful, remote alerting and audio indexing. Uh, and those mostly play with intentional communicative sounds and in incidental cue sounds. Why? Because those trigger some uh, very logical actions. You know that if you hear a gun, you might want to call the police. But what about the ambient sounds? Um, are there future applications that we could build on top of ambient sounds? So let's just start our imagination. Uh, for example, we could imagine a sound health meter, uh, something that would inform us about the sound quality around us. Of course, we can feel good or bad about the sounds around us, uh, but we have probably lost a bit of that connection that we had 5,000 years ago, where if the uh, birds would stop singing, for example, there would already be a sign of alert before the lion roars. Uh, nowadays, we are thinking about so many things, we have so much information with us that uh, we might feel things, but we might not be completely informed about how the sounds around us, how the ambient sounds are impacting our health and our mood, so why not build some kind of technology around that? That might be an interesting opportunity. There is also another application we could imagine is the semantic audio mapping. Uh, at the moment, for example, the way uh, the Google Maps or Google Street is working is they drove a car around all the streets uh, in every city uh, on the planet, and they uh, recorded the images around, uh, and they matched that with just the simple mathematical coordinates, uh, in, in geogra geographical coordinates. Now imagine doing that with a microphone. You could imagine some kind of a heat map where you could find uh, where are the quieter restaurants, or uh, where are the places which are more relaxing, if you hear the sound of the waves or something like that. Uh, or you could imagine um, uh, wanting to avoid loud roads. Um, so 
yeah, and you could do that in some kind of automatic way. So that could be a possible outcome for future technology. So I hope you, you enjoyed this talk. It was really about suggesting that apart from speech and music, there is a whole world of sounds, and uh, there is still a lot to do um, with technology, although already today we can do some pretty interesting stuff uh, with computers recognizing sounds in the security domain uh, and so on. There is a still a whole open world for the recognition of ambient sounds. Thank you very much.